Okay, first thing is let's talk about conductor insulation. That is going to be 310.4. Mario, why don't you take us over to uh, 310.4. And Brian, you're going to jump us over to 310.4. And this is an interesting table. I actually kind of enjoy this table at, at some level. I just kind of look at it once in a while, and I, and I find it to be kind of, kind of cool. So before we get into details of getting it, let's take a look at a graphic. All right, here we go. Conductors are marked on the insulation, and I think what we need to do is maybe uh, get a better pit, an actual photo of a wire. We don't have that in there, and we, we reduced it down to the simple context here. But it would be nice, Brian, in the future, let's make a note, Ryan. Let's get a nice picture of a nice photo, 500 KC mills, and just see what it looks like. Because this is okay, but it isn't what it looks like. And you guys, you know what? Just take a piece of wire in your, in your truck. You know what I mean? So you can do it yourself with that. All right. But here's the important thing. One, it's going to tell us the size of the wire. And we'll talk about size. Is it American wire gauge or KC Mills? So this is a 10-gauge wire. What we don't want to do is we don't want to say a number 10. Okay, that's how it used to be. In the, actually, it was that way in the code. It would say a number 6, a number 10, a number 8. The proper term is called 10 gauge or 10 American wire gauge. Okay, so it's, that's a size. You're also going to get information about the conductor insulation properties. This is an RHW, and the conductor is going to be marked with this insulation. For the purposes of our program here, um, we're not going to go over 2,000 volts in any of our examples, which if you go to table, if you go to 310, Mario, read to me, hold that page, but read to me 310 dot one, which is the scope of article 310. And, sure. and does it tell us something in there? Yeah. What does it say? This article covers general requirements for conductors rated up to and including 2000 volts and their designations, insulations, markings, mechanical strength, and opacity ratings. Okay. So 310 is up to 2000 volts. If you have more than 2000 volt conductors, not within the scope of this program, it's article 311. All right, so now go back to this graphic here. Okay, Vince. Uh, just to follow up on that, Mike, the title of the table that we're looking at, 310.4a, is up to 600 volts. So the table doesn't go up to 2,000. Really? This particular yes. table doesn't go up to 2,000. So this table is only going to list all the comet conductors up to 600 volts. You say, well, what that means is PV wire. The... Uh, PV wire would not be on this table. Well, PV wire is rated 2,000 volts. Oh, okay. Because there's a little one next to volts. Okay, <coughs> tell me, tell me. What and if it? we go to the little one, it says conductor shall be permitted to be rated up to 1,000 volts. 1,000. Down at the bottom of the table? Yeah, yeah down at the if bottom. If listed and marked. If listed and marked. Oh, here we go, right here. Okay. So I guess you could get some of these wires that they could be rated up to 1,000 volts. And the wire that I'm, I don't know what wire that would be. So we're going to move a little off here. I mean, the table, the, the article is up to 2,000 volts. The table, let's, what's the title of the, of the rule of the table? What's 310.4 say? So maybe 310.4 is right. telling us something that we don't even realize what it's saying. Uh, the title of 310.4 is Conductor Constructions and Applications. Okay, and what, read the text. Um, insulated conductor shall comply with table 310.4A and table 310.4B. Huh. I wonder what 4B is. That's a new table. Yeah. So 4B provides some information for conductors up to 2,000 volts. Okay. 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 So A is up to 1,000 volts. Okay. I mean, up to 600 volts with a note uh, could go up to 1,000 volts. Somebody want to make that. And then B is a new table up to 2,000 volts. Okay. That's new. I, I didn't even catch that as a new table. All right. Back to where we were. Looking at our graphic here, you know the wire size, this is information about the conductor, and it gives us the voltage marking on the conductor. So let's go to RHW, Brian and Mario. Let's go to RHW, and, and what is RHW? What is it telling us? Okay, here's on, RHW right here. Okay. Moisture-resistant thermoset. It's rated 75 degrees C. Okay, what's that? One Okay, if there's no H at all, then it's going to be rated 60 degrees C. Don't worry about all the details. Just, okay, whatever that means, it's rated 60 degrees C. If there's a single H in the installation, installation rather, that's rated 75, means heat. If there's a double H, 
then that means it's going to be rated 90 degrees C. Then there's a dash 2. Is there a rule somewhere about dash 2? And that, well, that's 90 degrees C? Uh, let's explain. It should be maybe a, a note on the bottom. Maybe on the bottom. That a dash 2, somewhere in there that a dash 2 conductor uh, will be rated for 90 degrees C. I don't see it on the okay, bottom. Okay, go back to RHW. Maybe there's an RHW dash 2 in the table. There is. They, there is. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Then they put it in the table. That's what they've done. Uh, RHW right here. Dash okay, two. so there's an RHW, which is 75, but there's an RHW dash 2, which is a 90. Okay? So, okay, now we know. And then if you go, then it's what? It tells you what location? Dry and wet locations says oh. that it's flame retardant, moisture resistant, oh. thermoset. Hold on, hold on a second. The reason we know it's a wet location is because it has a W. So yep. this is 75 degrees C, and it has a W, which means it's suitable for a wet location. Okay? And then, yes. Ben? And if it was 90 degree rated, it would have the dash 2 on the inside. And it would have the insulation. dash 2, which means it's a 9, the dash 2 is the second H, right? Instead of it saying 2H, it's, it's a dash 2, right. which is 90 degrees C but it can be suitable in a wet location. It used to be rubber, that's why it was R, but they don't use rubber anymore, they use thermoset, I think is, uh, is the description. Flip your slide oh, I'm sorry. to the conductors. This used to be, the, so this is heat, dash two is double, would have been 90 degrees C, that's a wet location, and it used to be rubber, and now it's thermoset, okay? So, okay, Brian, go back to your Okay, so it's wet and dry locations, flame retardant, whatever that means. I don't know. And it gives you the wire size. These and it are gives the you, sizes. Yep. And then what's that second column? Is that the diameter? Um, I think that's millimeters. Thick, thickness of, of thickness insulation. Of the insulation. Oh, and, and millimeter millimeters thickness. And mils. Okay, and then you have mils. Okay, let's take a look at, let's just go with a 12 gauge wire. What's the mils thickness of 12 gauge RHW? Uh, that's right here. That's or 10. 45. 45 mils. Okay, that's right. the thickness of the mils. It's pretty thick. Okay. It's pretty let's thick. Let's go to wire. T. Let's go to THHN okay. using uh, this next there. illustration here. That's going to be thermoplastic. It's going to be double H, and that means it's 9 degrees C, and it's N, nylon jacket, which means this conductor right here would not be permitted to be installed in a wet location because it doesn't have a W. So we're going to look at Brian's THHN. Our THHN, we're saying it's 90 degrees. Double H. Dry and damp locations, so okay. not wet. Not wet, no W. Flame retardant, heat resistant, thermoplastic insulation. And for the same 12 gauge, we got a 15 mils thickness insulation. And for the 10 gauge, is 20 mils. And for the 10 gauge, is 20 mils. Which is quite a bit smaller than the 30 mils yeah. that you had for RHW. So well, now you're well, thinking they have a lot of different conductor installations. Why, do we, why can't we just have one wire? I mean, like, why do we have all these different wires? Well, there's unique applications. RHW has 10 gauge, has a mil thickness of 30 mils, where THHN 10 gauge is a mil thickness of 20. Some people, in some applications, they want the conductor, in, the conductor material to be protected a little bit more, and they will specify RHH or RHW. They actually know. That means that the diameter of that wire is going to be larger, which means you're going to have to have a larger raceway or less conductors in the raceway. So somebody is going to design. When is RHW or RHW-2 used? Um, it's used for solar applications. It'll be used for single conductors, direct burial. A lot of times you'll see a lot of other conductors like a, a DLO, D, DLO, right? Diesel DLO. locomotive cable. Um, they will be marked DLO, but also marked RHH. So when something is marked, any of these conductor insulations, that means it's a conductor. So I'm just making a point. If it's marked with an insulation, it's a conductor. The code only allows the conductors recognized in 310.4 to be able to be used. I'm sure manufacturers somewhere in the world made all kinds of conductors. But if it's not recognized in 310.4, the NEC does not permit its use. Brian. Well, and I, I think that's a good point. You mentioned DLO has that other rating, and that's sometimes it does. It doesn't always have it on there. Right. So if it's DLO and that's all it says on that cable, and then I go to my table here and I go, oh, there's no DLO here. And, and I know this because I did this, Me right? Too. I'm looking at a motor control center. I'm seeing DLO. I'm wondering, hey, 
I don't know anything about this and I can't find it anywhere. And I never noticed the RHW part. I'm just like, I'm looking for DLO. Everybody says DLO, DLO, DLO. Well, I don't even know what that is. It sounds cool, locomotive cable, yeah. okay. But it's not in here. So it's important to understand that, yeah, that RHW has to be on there or it's not something that can be permitted to be used. All right, so we talk about conductors. Now the most common conductor I think that we're using in the industry is THHN slash THWN-2. So, Brian, let's take a look at what, what the reality is. It's THWN-2. That baby right here. Here's a THWN-2, and that's a 90-degree C-rated insulation. It's good for dry and wet locations. Uh, flame retardant, moisture resistant, heat resistant, thermoplastic. And uh, again, we got about 15 mils on the 12 gauge and about 20 on the 10 gauge. See, the advantage of THWN is that it can be in a wet location, and it can be 90 degrees C. Yep. yep. Where if you take a look at THWN, it's only permitted to be 75. The dash two is a relatively new item in the code. When I say relatively new, like a, a, a you know, maybe 10 years is relatively new after the last 125 years. So the dash two, it used to be just THWN, or THWN is what we're gonna work with, 90 degrees C, wet location, not, oh. The N stands for a nylon jacket. The nylon jacket on the exterior of a conductor is not part of the insulation. Brian, take a look at THWN-2 okay. in the table, and it talks about the mills thickness, and then on the right-hand side, go up the heading, see what the title is saying. What is that last column saying? That last column says covering, if I can get there. Outer covering. Outer covering. The outer covering is not, I love that live chat on the electronic version yeah. of the code. Actually, I hate it. But. And I, I think if we go down yeah, to the bottom, note. there's a little note, note about the covering. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I, I don't know if, because I thought note they two. changed this. Okay. Uh, outer covering should not, uh, no, that's not what I was thinking that said. Outer Nothing. covering should not be listed, that should not be required. We're listed without an outer covering. Yeah. So outer cover. Is unrelated to anything. In other words, my point is this. You might be having THHN or THWN-2, uh, and it's in a very cold environment, and the outer cover could be very brittle. Or when you pull it. Or when you, when pull, you pull it. Many it, times it, when it, you pull it, the nylon you part You damage it. Up. Yeah. yeah, and that's it's, it's sacrificing itself for the purposes to of protect protecting. the actual insulation. Protecting the actual insulation. So it's okay. So that's not a problem there. Um... Which of the following describes THHN? Well, uh, you'd have to go to, right, table 310.4. Yep. It's not something you could possibly know. And we're saying, well, it's thermoplastic, it's uh, 90 degrees C, and has a nylon jacket. Okay, SJO can be described. Okay, let's talk about flexible cords. Probably need a, an intro slide, maybe right there, Brian, somewhere about flexible cords. Flexible cords, we're going to go to Article 400. And there's a table 400.4, and table 400.4 will give us very similar properties as uh, we saw in 310.4. It's going to tell you uh, the description, you know, like the acronym, whatever, SJO, and then it's going to tell you where you can use the wet, dry locations, and things like that. So, Brian, yep, got it right here. take it to SJO. So, fixture wires. All right, so flexible cords oh, flexi and flexible, I mean, flexible cables, cords. and we're going to go down to EFG. S E O S J O. Okay, all the way down here. Okay. So it's rated for 300 volts. Okay, only 300 volts. That's uh, thermoset. Whatever that is. Oil resistant. Oil resistant. Damp location. Okay. So if a question asking, S J O can be described as, well, oops, sorry. So 300 volt. Suitable for a cable suitable, for a damp location. For a damp location. Which means it can't go outside. Correct. Right. Which is the, I'm sorry, Boyd? What, what is it on the far right hand side of that says hard usage? What does hard usage mean? Uh, uh, hard usage. Where are you seeing that? On the right hand side of that table. Go further over. Further right. Uh, hard usage. Okay, I see. What does that mean? I think what it means is this. There are places in the National Decode that they will describe and tell you the type of flexible cord permitted. Extra hard uses, hard uses. So apparently there are some cords, or it might not even tell you the cord type. They'll just simply say 
the cord shall be of the hard use type. So then you'd have to go to the right side, find what are the hard use type cords, and then on the left side, find out, well, what is my application? It's a wet location, it's a dry location, it's gonna be sunlight resistant, you know, then, you, you, so the code will tell you the usage required. Um, do me a favor, guys, or Brian with the code book, if you have the electronic version, see if you can t search for uh, hard usage. And I'm sure if we get into mobile homes, it'll tell you that cord for a mobile home is going to be... Is it an abuse factor, then? It's well, like uh, how hard it can be abused? I'm sure there's a standard somewhere in UL that they've identified that whenever they test this cord under this usage, I think, I don't know what the different uses types are. Can you see what the different types were on it's Mario? Hard. Hard and extra hard. There's hard, okay, there's hard extra and extra hard. hard. There might be some that don't say anything at all. Not hard usage. Does it say not hard usage? Not, yes. Exactly. So I'm sure in the, in the watch says how they tested not hard usage, hard uses, extra hard uses. There's going to be something. Like they pull it through things, they test like that. But we don't care about that because the code tells us when we need to have a specific type of cord. Yeah, so we got in 50110B2 right here. It's saying flexible cord listed for extra hard usage is what they're requiring in there. And let's Hold on a second. What... But that is in 501, which is a classified location. Right. right. So we'd have right. to go to extra hard usage, and then we'd have to look on the left side and find out well, which one is going to be oil resistant. Or, or, or Eric? There's also one in, in uh, 368 busways, 368.56A. Suitable cord and cable assemblies identified for extra hard usage or hard usage and listed bus drop cable shall be permitted as branches from busways to connection to portable equipment. So, and, and I'm thinking about RVs. You got a cord, you know. The, so when you get a cord, like it's outdoors, it's going to be sunlight resistant, right? And so the code is going to say the type of cord usage, um, rather than like, well, you could use this where hard usage is required. You know, it's not that obscure type of thing. It actually is just, the code says you need it this way. Well, then that's how we know we need it. Anybody else make a comment? I, I just want to, you know, we covered this more in the understanding the National mm -hmm. Entrepreneur exactly. Volume 1. So I don't want to go too deep into this, but it's really important to know what type of cord you're using, what type of conductor insulation you have, because we have a tendency as an industry to not worry about oh, hey, this is going to go underground, um, or this is going to be outside where it's going to get wet. And we, we'll say, we go into the supply house, we hey, give me some SO cord. Well, you better not buy SO cord, because if yeah. you buy SO cord yeah. and put it outside, it's actually a code violation. What yeah. you actually want is SOW or SEOW. So I think we get very casual with this type of thing, and I think it's really something important to remember. And if they haven't already watched the you know Understanding Volume 1, that section on cords and cables and that when we talk about insulation types is really, I think, an important thing for a guy to understand. Well, yeah, if you're going to be out in a, in a dock, right, you can be wiring up a dock, yeah. and a lot of times flexible cords, easy to get to those pedestals than it is to sit there and run a raceway and PVC and strap it. Might be the only way. You know, sometimes. and it might, because it's going to be moving around, yeah, floating. exactly. And if we go to uh, Article, well, we go to 555, 555 right. it'll tell you the type of cord that you're going to use. Yeah. I think it's a G. Yep. Type G cable or something like that. So the, the code will tell you what you need, and then you got to go over into Article 400 and find out, well, is it a wet location? Is it, I mean, which one can I use of the ones that's required? Yeah, just don't assume just because it's a black rubber cord that it's the right one is, right. is what my point was. Especially if Mario is going to be going Especially out there. Especially if Mario's <laughs> inspecting that boy. Inspecting yeah. your job. We'll be looking at the insulation. <laughs>